That's because relatively few computers are recycled, and the National Safety Council estimates that half a billion will be packed into American landfills between 1997 and 2007. Everybody in the government knows that the environmental problems from electronic scrap is a nightmare. Even the White House has somebody who is on electronic recycling on a committee for the president. Everybody knows this is a nightmare. If it hasn't already happened, it's right around the corner. And it's not the first time Americans have faced this kind of nightmare. Long before there was high-tech junk, there was low-tech trash. And it was packing landfills at an alarming rate. The problem led to recycling plants that specialize in rescuing reusable household materials before they reach the dump. Most people in our country you know, regard recycling as their disposal, but actually it's a large industry in the United States. The industry today is in excess of $20 billion, which is approximately half the size of the U.S. steel business. In 1970, the first Earth Day was held to draw attention to environmental problems. One of many concerns was overcrowded landfills. Recycling household products such as cans, bottles, and plastic containers seemed a simple solution. So, high-tech recycling plants were built. Some claimed the almost magical ability to take trash straight from the garbage truck and extract the recyclable goods. But many failed. The problem was most of these organizations were run by people who were highly motivated by the environment and didn't know the economics of scrap recycling. What we really have to understand is that this is a business and it's got to make money in order to survive. While private industry faltered, the government stepped in. Household recycling began in the mid to late 80s. Basically, due to legislation and lack of landfill space, the uh, cities were forced to get into the curbside or household recycling. Um, the programs primarily started with a dual stream program where the city would put one bin out for newspapers and one bin out for containers, which would be glass, steel, plastic, and aluminum. The dual stream system wasn't an overwhelming success. Perhaps it was too demanding for a partially committed public. By the early 1990s, single stream recycling allowed people to throw everything into one bin. Single stream was more user friendly, and the public seemed willing to start recycling. In many places, the intake of goods doubled. Today, curbside recycling is more widespread than ever. The Allen Company is the repository for recycled materials collected in San Diego, California. The plant sorts and bundles used household paper, cans, and bottles. We get in about 180 tons of material every day. As you can see, the trucks dump the material in this big pile, and this is where the process starts. The material is put on the conveyor belt, and it goes up to the top of the pre-start station. We have people that are picking off the trash and the cardboard, and then it goes on to the news screen. The paper surfs over the news screen's wheels, while the heavier material, like metal cans and plastic containers, fall between the cracks to a conveyor belt below. The process relies heavily on manual labor. As many as 40 hand pickers remove any material that slips through the separators. After all the materials are sorted and baled, they come out to our yard to be stored until we ship them either by rail or container. Every year, more than 200 billion pounds of used materials pass through recycling yards as a first step to becoming new products. And as more local governments mandate recycling programs, these yards may soon become the most numerous junkyards in the country.